seminar and the next seminar. And if you pick up one tool every single time, you're going to have an arsenal. And it's going to put you in a position to where you're going to have success, but it's going to be habitual because you're going to ingrain these things in you and it's going to be so much fun. Um, what, the, what the PowerPoint actually has, it says if plan A doesn't work, the alphabet has 25 more letters. So keep on going, keep on pressing. And then I, um, I actually have a picture here. I don't know what that, if you all can see that, probably pretty hard. And what does it look like? It's devastating. It's devastating, right? Okay. It's, 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 it's that the cow is stuck. All right. The cow is stuck right now. I mean, and, and you can look at, and I look, when I saw this picture, I could just look at the cow and I, and I could just imagine just it looking at the road where it wanted to be and half of his body on this side, the other half on this side, and the pain that they're going through, right? The pain. So it's, it's got a vision of where it actually wants to go, of where it wants to be, but it has to go through the pain in order to get there. And some of the things right now that you're going, you all are going through is the discomfort, is the growing phase, is the, uh, you're literally working your, your muscles out. Through your adversity, I, 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 what just came to mind is, um, you know, a butterfly, um, it's, it's a worm, right? It starts off as a caterpillar, right? An ugly caterpillar, right? Would you, would you rather have a butterfly land on you or a giant caterpillar fall out the sky and <laughs> fall on your shoulder? Which one would you like? A butterfly. butterfly, right? Well, in order to become a beautiful butterfly, what it has to do is make this cocoon, right? And it has to fight out of this cocoon. Now, if you were to rip the cocoon open for the butterfly, the muscles in the wings would never develop and it would never fly. All right? So it has to break through. It has to go through something in order to become something. And that's what gives it the strength and the resilience. Okay? Does that make sense? So that cow right there is going to remember that, <laughs> it's going to remember that metal pole there, right? And it's going to appreciate. It's going to have a higher state of appreciate of its freedom once it gets there. So this, this is purpose right here. And this is a statement by Oprah Winfrey where it says, there is no greater gift you can, you can or receive, can give, there's no greater gift you can give or receive than to honor your calling. It's why you were born and how you become most truly alive. So purpose is something that I, um, I want, we're going to start the process of actually looking at how to gain our purpose, how to find it. How many people in here, no shadow of a doubt, they know their purpose, know their purpose in life, okay? And I'm, and I'm, going, to, I'm going to tell you the truth. That's awesome if you do right now, but it's a constant, constant, constant search because it's going to, it can change. Some people's never change. Michael Jordan, right? He probably never thought he'd be a billionaire. He probably never thought he'd be a, 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 a businessman. Oprah Winfrey, she probably never thought, right, even when she was the number one, um, um, what, what is she, anchor woman, what, reality show, whatever, talk show host, the number one talk show host, they used to say Oprah was, was God, right? They say if she spoke it, it just materialized, things changed. They say, Oprah, just touch my book. Just say it, just, just say it. Say, say my name on your TV show, Oprah. And all of a sudden, things would materialize. She probably never dreamed or imagined. I mean, if you have that influence, that power, you know, why not just stay there, right? Well, she opened a school in Africa. She has her own, own station now. You know, because her purpose, her, her dream, it materialized. It grew into something. So if you have your purpose and you're fixed on it, that's awesome. But it's going to change. Because as you evolve, everything that you're going to do is going to evolve, believe it or not. Believe it or not. So really just starting with that, starting with the end in mind. And that's knowing exactly where you want to be. Every, every person in here pretty much knows, you know, what you're majoring in or what you want to do, right? Does everybody know? I don't know. Everybody knows what they want to do. Who doesn't? Who doesn't know what they want to do? Okay, which is, I mean, which is fine. It's, it, you're still searching, all right? I have... Um, a good friend of mine, it took him seven years to get his bachelor's. Seven years. But he's very happy. He's very successful. Okay? 
starting with the end in mind. So the first thing that we're going to do, everybody got pen and a paper. Everybody got pen and a paper. All right. Now we're we about to start putting things in it. They say there's three manifestations to creation. Okay. If you can master all of these three manifestations, you can create anything because it's how God created us. It's how he created the earth, and it's how we create everything. There's three manifestations to creation. The very first thing is you got to have a thought. See, once you think something, once you think something, it's brought into existence, right? The minute that you think of it, oh, I want to fly. I want to fly in an aircraft, right? I want to fly. How am I going to do it? The aircraft was, was invented. I want to go to space. I want to walk on the moon. What happened? The spaceship was created. The space suit was created. Man walked on the moon. All right? I want to have mashed potatoes without doing all the work, right? Instant mashed potatoes, right? Instant mashed potatoes, okay? Anything you can think of can be created, right? Anything. So now we're going to start that part. That's the first manifestation of Christ. The second one is the putting... Um, no, saying it, speaking it. The second one is actually speaking it out loud. When you speak it out loud, it's in the atmosphere, now it's in the environment. You've just, uh, you've given it life. You've literally given it life. Um, I'm going to be a doctor, a lawyer, a teacher. I'm going to be a psychologist. Um, I'm going to go, I'm going to get my PhD. All right? You brought it to life. Now the third manifestation of creation, the third manifestation is doing the action toward getting you there. All right? And this is why it's critical that you have to start with the end in mind. You've got to know exactly what it is, what you want. And you, just, you focus on it. You talk about it. You share it with other people. But right now, we're going to do five growth activities that can get you closer to your goal. I want you to write down Five things that can get you closer to your goal. You mean personally? Personally. The thing about it is, information isn't, isn't hidden, it isn't lost, it isn't, it's the same thing. And you all, all know what you could do to get you closer to your goal. Do you need to study more? Do you need to read more? Do you need to make better relationships? Do you need to be a better communicator? Do you need to exercise more so you have more energy to do the things you want to do? Do you need to stop watching TV and take that extra hour to, to, to do something more productive? Do you need to get up earlier, go to sleep earlier? You're going to write down five different things. Don't just write down the stuff I said. You said it's a pretty good stuff. write down everything. Because it's going to be for your particular goal. That TV part, I have a problem with. Right. Do a TV fast and do it for a week and watch your time open up. You're going to be like, I have so much time. You're going to start scratching like you're a fiend, like you, you're hurting for something. Yeah. I, I got so much time, I don't know what to do. I, go exercise. Go have a conversation with somebody. Is, is, is get a book and as soon as you get five different ones so you don't get bored if you don't like to, you know, just throw yourself into a book and read a chapter. That next week your mind's going to be so open, you're going to be so rested. Now when, I, when we get finished, I'm going to have five volunteers come down and uh, share me what their end is, and then I'm going to have them, yeah, I'm going to pick some people too, because I saw some people look like they didn't want to do it. There ain't no One thing a coach of mine told me uh, one time, uh, and I, I never forgot it, he said, uh, to have the things that others don't, you must be willing to do the things that others won't. Um, sometimes you gotta lose a little sleep. 
sometimes you gotta invest in things that are gonna progress you as far as technology than a nice outfit, getting the hair and the toes and the nails done, you know. Your mom's a wise woman. Very wise woman. Drink water instead of Kool-Aid. You might have to cut back sometimes. Five things, five activities, five activities that will give you growth. And they don't have to be super technical. This is just the start. Just because you don't give me eye contact don't mean I can't see you. I see you turning away. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Looks like everybody is done. Okay, give me three volunteers and I'm picking two people. Three volunteers? Oh, I gotta pick everybody? Okay. <laughs> you, right there, come on down with me. You. Who? You. Uh -huh. And you, come on down with me. Let me see you right there, striped shirt there. And let me see, come on down here with me, come on down. I remember when I used to talk, come on down. And you right there, young man, come on down. Come on down, come on down, come on down. <laughs> uh, I got some more, don't worry about it, I got some more. I used to talk, right? Is that five people? Oh yes, come on down, come on. Yes, it's you, that's you, absolutely. I was wondering where you was at. I used to talk, I used to get up, right? And I used to be drenched in sweat. So, because my, one, my, one of the things my coaches told me was to get 10 white shirts when I first started business, 10 white shirts. And uh, I used to get so nervous. My, my lip would quiver a little bit, be so bad. <laughs> I, 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 and then I'd be wet right here. So I couldn't raise my arms up, so I'd go like this when I was talking and I wanted to, to move something somewhere. But we go ahead, start with the end in mind. What do you want to be? What's your end? What's the end result? Awesome. How about you? I'm a registered nurse. Okay. Yeah, awesome. What about you? In like major? The, the end. Well, just well, where you're at now. Business. Oh, your own business? What kind of business? Hey. I'm not sure. There's so many options. So. Very good. Outstanding. How about you? Hey. On a restaurant. Outstanding. Work. Yeah, I'm a small time, multi business owner. Okay. Oh, what, what's that? What you said? Small time, what now? Small time, multi. Okay. All right. Outstanding. Outstanding. So. I want you to give me five. Now, the reason why we're doing this, okay, like steel beats on steel, steel sharpens steel, right? So you might be able to hear something from them that you can add to your list. Not why you're up here, though. And, and, you might, and you might be able to hear something that you can gain from them. This is what I was talking about, about the, those, um, those redwood trees, interlocking and strengthening. We can learn from everybody, no matter what ethnicity, female, male, because all of us have had experiences, you know, that we can, we can gain from. So you have some important things to tell everybody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not, really. <laughs> Not really. Well, five things. What are, the five, what are your five things? Okay, study more. Okay. And stop avoiding homework. Okay. Uh, reading more. Oh, okay, what do you mean? So you got, you got more things. Tell me what you mean by more. 20 minutes, 30 minutes. Okay, we have, I've started a book, but it's just there. Okay, so so scheduling time throughout the day to actually sit down. Okay, excellent. What else? Uh, don't rush things. Awesome. Oh, what do you mean by rush? Tell me. Give me an example. I'm doing my homework really late, and it's like I'm rushing it. It's not kind of uh, procrastination. Yeah. Right. Oh yeah. Right. Very good. And you get to rush through it, and you don't get the quality through it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Excellent. And what? That's the last one. No, one more. Yeah. Yeah. That, are you sure? Yeah. That was four, right? Well, it was about homework too. That was about homework too. Excellent. Excellent. Go ahead, you next. Um, studying on a course that I, I don't understand. You say what now? Studying on a course that I don't understand. Okay, okay. And focus on my homework. Focus on our homework more. Yeah. What do you mean by focusing on homework? Like I have like, uh, like I have two jobs. Okay. And I focus more on my job than my schoolwork. Right, right. I got <laughs> that. I got that. I'm, I'm going to share something with you about that when you get finished. Go ahead. And be in school every day. 
Mm -hmm. And I'm taking care of her, and I take care of my brother and sisters. So um, basically, when she gets sick, I have to go with her to the hospital because she can take one of my little brothers and sisters. Wow, so yeah. Yeah, yeah. And Perfect attendance is something. Just the show, just showing up yeah. makes a big deal. Okay, go ahead. And then return homework or assignments on time. Okay. Kind of, kind of late uh, okay. So finding a way, even if you can't be here, to make sure that that's that's awesome. Keep going. Yeah, and the last one is work harder and try harder. Work harder and try. Harder. Excellent. And and that comes from habit. And that comes from rituals. Um, earlier when we talked about rituals. You can condense and create more time in, the, in your activities if you do certain things and you put it in a ritualistic type th deal. When I was in um, chiropractic school, I had three jobs. Um, I was the embalmer for the school. So all of the bodies that came in that, uh, that we dissected, I embalmed them and I got them ready to get and got them prepped because I knew, number one, nobody else would do the job. And number two, I, could, I had as many hours as I wanted to. And I also bounced at a club and then I did a mobile, I was working on a mobile detail shop because I believed that I needed three streams of income. One was to pay, send home money for my family, one was to pay my bills, and then um, one was my play money. So I can actually do stuff or I can live, right? So um, my schooling took the back seat. And I'd be in class and I'd get a call to come to work. You know, and, I, and these were the teachers from the school calling me out the class to come do something in the gross lab. But I was running to do that, putting more value on it when the most important thing was was being in class. And, I, and, and time management could have could have supported me with that. But I had to have failed several classes and was behind um, and I ended up having to take double schedule just to get just to graduate with my class on time. So. Um, that is something, that is a great goal. Keep working at it. Um, and just with your situation, you know it better. You know, I, I, I saw that, yes. Uh, I was wondering, you said you had three jobs and you're going to school. Mm -hmm. How on earth did you have any time to do anything with play Well, you know, I, you'd be surprised. <laughs> when you want to do stuff, you find the time to do it. Even if it's early in the morning, at any time, I wasn't sleeping much. But I mean, it, 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 you'd be surprised. You can make time for those things. Go ahead, young lady. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Um, another thing is procrastination. I put things off to the last minute, too. So that kind of, you know, kind of goes hand in hand with time management. Um, another thing is sometimes I ask people, like, what do they think I should be? Instead of, like, doing the research on my own. And I seek other people. I seek other people for advice. Mm -hmm. um, and sometimes too much advice is a bad thing. Right. Um, <laughs> You gotta pick and choose. You gotta pick and choose there. I do need to get more more sleep. Um, Rest. Okay. Yeah, I do. I, don't, I guess I wouldn't know how to like, like you know, be. Yeah. No, those those are all huge things and important things. And I'm I'm hearing a, I'm hearing a trend here. I want I want to hear you you two you you guys and I'm gonna go over every single one of these things as far as with you guys. Go ahead. Uh, with me, I have uh, reading just because. Uh, well, I'm not only gonna be reading uh, culinary books because that's what I'm interested in. Mm -hmm. I like to do business as well, so that uh, that way, whenever I uh, get ready to start my own business, I'm well equipped to have. So it. reading more. So okay. Reading more. Networking because uh, I need to uh, create more uh, networks with people to talk to, just so I can, uh, when I'm ready, mm -hmm. have those people that can help me. And uh, for time management. Uh, I'm uh, lazy about doing stuff sometimes. I procrastinate a lot, so that's what that is. And then I want to start exercising more just so I'm uh, a lot more awake throughout the day. And then uh, last, I have work just because without work, I'm dead. You said work now? Without work, I'm dead. I'm just being lazy all day. Good. So, so, so getting a job? Yeah. Okay, excellent. Next. Okay. Um, well, Activities to get me close to my goal was um, that I need to manage my time more wisely. Okay. Um, I, I think I'm doing all right, but maybe I'm not because things are not going the way I expect. Mm -hmm. you know, um, to communicate um, um, with the students, um, those classmates a little bit more because mm -hmm. I'm a type person, I'm solo. Mm -hmm. I don't be able to speak. I might 
like child free, you know, when I'm on track personally. To yourself? Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. And, uh, another one uh, is I need to um, try to do, complete my assignments on time. Okay. Um, I'm, not, I'm not too, you know, since it's been some years since I've been in school, you know, mm -hmm. um, first year in college, um, I'm kind of, kind of slow when it comes to using the computer or whatever. I don't have no typing skills. Mm -hmm. But I'm better than what I was when I started. Mm -hmm. You're probably better than me. I'm 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 two I'm two fingers man just like that man. Got some strong muscles in there too. Oh uh, yeah. Mhm. <laughs> 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 But you know what? This, and this is, and I got, and I got something for that too. And that's um, just in life, you can't take it personal. Yeah. Just not even take it personal. And I got, I want, I want to um, kind of touch on everything you all said. Could you all get him a hand? Thank you very much. You can go to that. Hey, just, you know, and that's that's something big, and I can understand that, especially you know, being out for a while. Um, in life, don't take anything personal, and don't feel like you have to be or you're less up because you have to ask. Some of the things that I've gotten in life, um, most of the time is because I just went and asked. I just went and asked, can I have this? Can, can I do this? It's, it's, it's just going to ask. If you're hungry, if you're hungry, you don't have any food, and I see a restaurant over there, I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna ask for some food, and I'm gonna tell them I don't have any money. What is the worst thing that they can do? Say no, you ain't never had it anyway. I, I didn't have it before, right? So you know what? That tutor has something that you need, and he can help, he or she can help you, and you know what? Find that voice, because now you're talking about fighting against something that you're you uncomfortable. Now you're stepping out of that comfort zone. You're like, I don't like going to nobody, I don't want to ask nobody, I, they shouldn't have treated me like that. You know what? Hey, that won't be the first person, and I'm sure it's not going to be the last. You know? So pushing through with that, I, I got you on that. I got you on that. I um, e Even just being a, um, just, being a doctor, you know, in my profession, and, um, and I walk up to places, and, um, <laughs> and you know, oftentimes, I'm, how you doing? I'm Dr. Vaught, you know, and it's, uh, who, you're what? I mean, you know, or I'll call, you know, thank God my name is Frank, right? Because I, 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 don't, I don't seem like I'm African-American when I call. And this is Dr. Vaught, you know, Dr. <laughs> Frank Vaught, and I'm making this or this or whatever, and they, oh, okay, and then they, I show up, and they don't expect to see me. But you gotta love people. And sometimes, you know, you can love, you, you just love them, and you know what? You can change them. You, you, you can change them. You can shift them. And then when they meet the next you, they're going to be at that person's feet helping them out. Yeah. You know, so I mean, it's, that, that's, that's a test for you. Once you pass it, you go into the next level. Mm -hmm. Everything is a test. So I hope that was helpful. One of the things I heard a lot of you all say with, uh, with time management. Okay, let me tell you about time management. All right? You get the same 24 hours in a day that I do. That, that, um, that, that, that everybody does. I think about, I think, is, is it Richard Branson who owns on Virgin Records? What's his name? Branson, he has like 700 some businesses. He works from um, home on the island that he bought. He's a multi-billionaire. And he sits at home and he works from eight o'clock in the morning to one o'clock in the afternoon. That's it, five days a week, and he cuts off. He meets with every single company that he has, and what he does is he gives five-minute increments to the big people 
one or two minute increments to the smaller companies. If you need to read more, don't see you're taking on too big of a um, too big of a challenge. Give yourself just five extra minutes to read. The business, the business, the business that you were talking about, you want to learn more about it, get you a book, give yourself five minutes. You read every single day five minutes out that book, by the end of the week you'll be halfway through that book. I guarantee, I guarantee. And you gotta start off like that. If you need more time to study, what you do is schedule a time where you know and you don't deviate from it. This is the thing about rituals. You never deviate from them. I know things come up. Things always come up. In life, things are going to come up. But when you set your ritual schedule, you never deviate from it. No matter if you're tired, no matter if you're sick, no matter if anything, you stay on it. And number two, some of us need help with procrastination. Anybody need a little help with procrastination? Wow. <laughs> I forgot what it was like to be in college. You, yeah, you don't have that. Well, this is what you, because you need accountability. You need accountability, right? Get yourself an accountability partner. Because if you won't tell yourself what to do, somebody else would love to tell you what to do. You'd be surprised. Hey, he, he's one of them right there. He'll wake you up every morning. Hey, get up. Get on downstairs. You said you was going to study. He, even, he, even if he's not, he's going to get you up and he's going to make sure that you're doing what you're supposed to do. Get an accountability partner, somebody you can trust, somebody you can hold accountable. Hey, look, you, I'm not talking about, I don't have to be buddy-buddy with you. I don't have to be friends. Look. I was wondering, could you be my accountability partner in this class? <laughs> I, I, I want to I make sure that I'm, I'm studying, even if, you know, if, if, if we don't study together, you know, we, we can email, we can get together for 15 minutes, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, and go over things. I can look at my notes, you can look at yours. These are things that sharpen the sword. And it's also building that root system. Building that root system. Okay? What is your why? Who knows their why? Who knows their why? One person? You gonna pick on me. Uh, do you know your why? Yeah. Who knows it? Who knows the why? Okay, could you stand there and tell me your why? Awesome. Awesome. So, I mean, so, so, so your purpose is and your why is, is you want your daughter to see something greater and have a, 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 a big example and have an easier path in life. Absolutely. And you're going to fight for that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. How about you? You said, you know, the why? Outstanding. Well, next are quiet and I'm also a first generation student. Okay. My why is basically, I just want my mother to have somebody who she knows out of all my other siblings, at least one made it across the line mm -hmm. to what they wanted to do in life. And also, just to prove to myself that no matter what happens in life or no matter what goes on, that I'm still able to achieve all the things that I want. Awesome. Awesome. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, when your why is, is as big as, is, is, is what they're talking about as far as in that vision right now. Now, they're going to, with their why's right now, you all are going to graduate. I already see it. You all are going to graduate. Every, everybody in here is going to graduate. And that's when your why is going to have to go to the next level. If you all weren't going to graduate, you all wouldn't be sitting through this right now. You all wouldn't be pushing toward for something more. The people that push and the people that search, they find what they're searching for. You don't not get it if you keep pushing. Like I said, you can't get where you're not already at. You're already at graduation. You're just working backwards. So when you're thinking about your why, I want you all, I want you all to um, write down now your why. My, my why... And, and this is for you. And then I, I, I'm going to ask again, and I'm not going to pick on nobody, because I want somebody to, to share with me. I want you all to want to share with me. But you write your why down. My why used to be about my mom. It used to be about, you know, making sure that one day I could take care of her. 
And when she passed away, and you know, and I was successful, and I had multiple businesses, and and uh, my kids were set. You know, okay, do I just stop there? Do I do I not do anything anymore? Then my why became bigger. If you want to have an impact as big as your city, you got to have a, a vision as big as your state. If you want to have a an impact big as your state, you got to have a vision as big as the country. You want to have an impact big as the country, you have a, a, a vision big as the world. And if you want to impact the world, you've got to have a, an inter, intergalactic, a, something as big as space, you've got to have a vision, something uh, to that capacity, and that's how that comes about. Thinking about Gandhi, Martin Luther King, Mother Teresa, they had visions of international peace, international love, international togetherness, all right? And that's why they made the impact that they made. Depending on how big that you want to get it. My why is to cause a shift and a change in the world so that people can have healthier lives. One of the best things that could have ever happened to me is when I went to the Dominican Republic and I did mission work. And I talked to some of the people over there. And these were some of the poorest, poorest people that I've ever met. But they were the happiest. They were smiling. They didn't have any stress. No windows on their doors. I went into one woman's house and she was sitting on a crate with a pillow on it. She didn't have any legs. I don't know how she got up the stairs. Didn't have any legs, no teeth in her mouth, and she had a crate in there, and it, and it, and it had a broken TV on it, and there was no furniture in there. And we were going through the village, and we were adjusting people and giving them medical care, and, and these were the happiest people on the planet because they were getting something with the health. They valued it. I want to impact that world. I want to touch that world. See, we live in a society that's so stress-driven on, on having and getting more that we can sometimes be sucked into this little bitty box. But there's an entire world out there. Okay? Everybody wrote their why down? Who wants to share it with me? Anybody want to share? I share it mine. <laughs> Anybody want to share it with me? Okay, I'll stand there. Stand on up and share, please. Yes, yes, yes. The brave one stands. <laughs> <laughs> My why is for me. Because if I can help me, I can help others. Wow, that's amazing. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. So this, with your why, what I want you to do is hold on to it, harness it, and look at it every day. Just look at it every day and write it and rewrite it and change it. It doesn't stay the same. Every day you're going to have new experiences that are going to take you to another level, another place. Okay? Principles. Okay? A principle is a fundamental truth or proposition that serves as the foundation for a system of belief or behavior or for a chain of reasoning. So whether we know it or not, whether we know it or not, all of us right now are living off of our own principles, right? Some of us believe, you know, hey, every single morning, I'm going to dress like this because this is respectable. Or every single morning, I'm going to do this, or I'm going to eat like this, or I'm going to do this. Those are our principles, our belief systems, how we feel about something, the way we live our lives our morals and our ethics, our principles that we live by. So my principles is I believe that people that I greet, that I meet, I, I smile at and I say hello. That, that's, that's a principle that I live by. Um, if, if someone comes to my home and they're hungry, they're going to eat. A principle that I live by. If someone walks up to me and, and I believe that they're in need, I'm going to give to them, even if it's my last. Some people might be like, hey, look, they're trying to trick me up as a protection mechanism. I'm going to push them away, right? I don't have nothing. Get, me, get away from me, right? That's a principle that they live by, right? All right? So whatever principles, principles that you live by 
are the things that are going to definitely make it, you have a certain quality of life. So we got to look at some of the principles. And if we don't have all of them there, we need to start creating them. Number one, affirmations. Writing down affirmations and start incorporating them into your everyday life. strong, I'm powerful, I'm, I'm good looking, right? Some of y'all might want to put down, I'm sexy. I'm a love magnet, right? <laughs> right? I'm intelligent, I'm a good father, I'm a great husband, I'm God-fearing, I'm, I'm, um, I'm magnetic to success. All right? I mean, you can make any one of your own affirmations. It can be anything you want. This is the thing about it. The power is in the words and your intention. You combine those two things together, I'm telling you. You ever wonder how some people, they, like he said, he thought he was ugly. I was listening to the last speak. He thought he was ugly for, for, um, for what, 17 years? What? He thought he was ugly for 17 years. He said he walked around, he said, you know, I'm just ugly. You know, I see some people, and you look at them, and, that, and you look at them, I'm not, I'm not, the, I'm not the best looking person. But I mean, but they, but you know what? They walk around and they carry themselves a certain way and you couldn't tell them nothing. And then you'll see who they went like, what the, how did he or she do that? What are they, what did they do? You ain't lying. You, be, <laughs> you, you know, know what I'm talking about? Why y'all look lost? Y'all know what I'm talking about back there? Or is it just me? I'll be looking, sometimes I'm like, but it's how they carry themselves. It's what they speak on themselves. Okay. Affirmations, you can speak these same things over yourself, over your life, and over the things that you want. So we're gonna create 10 affirmations right now. You are gonna leave here with some power today. 10 affirmations. Then I'm gonna need some volunteers. <laughs> I'm gonna need some more volunteers. Now, I'm on, I'm on, I'm on, I'm on uh, volunteers, I'm gonna pick, if I picked you once, you've already dodged the bullet. Okay. But everybody else, y'all not safe. <laughs> powerful affirmations just talking about things that you want to see just just happen in your life and you say these things every day you meditate on them you'd be surprised how they start being in your head and all of a sudden I'm beautiful and then you start seeing things of beauty all around you then someone tell you you're beautiful all right I'm rich you find a quarter on the ground next day you find 50 cents Really? You did. You talking, you in a room full of college students now. You in a room full of college students. You might want to be quiet about that hundred bucks. <laughs> oh, it's already gone? That's right, you are college students. Already gone. Oh <laughs> yeah. Hey. Just 10, just 10. I'm a great student. I have great organization skills. I, I never procrastinate. Even if you do, start speaking that into existence. I'm not a procrastinator. I'm on time. This was one of the hardest things for me to do the first time I did this. Because I was thinking too much. Man, what do I want? I want to. We can sometimes think ourselves out. It's called stinking thinking. When you get to thinking too much, you got to cut that out. Sometimes you got to just do. Stinking thinking. You know, and, and even, um, and, and I know uh, just, just some of the people, you saw the people that I picked up, the majority of everybody was different, different backgrounds, different ages and everything. And you looked at every single one of them had similar things going on in their lives as far as time management, reading more, wanting to study more, um, and, and being more in the area of their focus. 
and all of those things, you'd be surprised if we came together as a group collectively and supported everybody, uh, supported each other on our strengths in some of these areas. How, how amazing that would be, the things that you can get from people. Because everybody's got little tricks there, you know that? Everybody's got little things that they can do pretty good, scholastically. Right now, what you're doing is investing time on yourself. You're investing into yourselves right now. You're thinking about yourselves. I listen to a lot. I remember being a first generation college student. Most of the reason why school isn't so important is because so many other things in life tend to be. And you put a lot of things before yourself. When you can still invest time into those things and create the time to invest into yourself. Okay, looks like the majority of people are finishing on up. Okay, excellent. So who's gonna be my first volunteer? Awesome, come stand on up there. Do you don't have to come down, just stand okay. up. <laughs> stand on up there, stand on up. Let's hear those affirmations there. Speak some power. Okay, so, I don't know why this is number one, Lord. Okay, uh, I'm going to have a wonderful husband. I am going to be wealthy one day. I am good at organizing. I am deserving, I am going to stay fit. I'm going to be able to travel whenever I want and still manage my business and money. I'm going to make all A's while in college. I'm going to finish college on time. I will have my business by 2015 and my business will evolve and change. Outstanding, outstanding, outstanding. Who's next? Where my team left? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see that? You already demanded that. There you go. You're taking things. Outstanding, who's next? <laughs> yes, I get to pick somebody. Nobody wants to volunteer. Over here. Yes, you got you, you got ten written down. I, I, I don't have a pencil. Okay, stand on up. You want to give ten? Absolutely. I will finish college. Outstanding, number one. I am beautiful. Number two. Yes, you are. <laughs> <laughs> I will get my degree. Absolutely, number three. I will be a good mother. Absolutely, number four. I shall, in my text, you will not see it where I gave up. I will not give up. Number five, all right, all right. I am courageous. There we go, come on now. I am delightful. They're all delightful, let's get, keep it going. I am spiritual. All right, you're spiritual, keep it going. I am dedicated. Dedicated. Let's and motivated. And motivated, what's up, what's up, hey, hey. Hey, hey, why are you all the way over there? You need to come on over here with us. I you need to bring some of that over here now. Outstanding, outstanding. One more person. One, just one more. <laughs> all right, you right there, sir. Absolutely want to hear yours. Let's go. All 10 of them. Stand on up with me there. <laughs> See, the quietest ones are the ones I'm coming after there. So if your eyes are down, you're hiding, you know, if you, if you Mr. Invisible Man, I can see you. <laughs> there we go. I am smart. Excellent. I am graduating. Excellent. I am confident. Great. I never procrastinate. There we go. I am outgoing. I am interesting. I'm rich. I'm handsome. 
<laughs> That's awesome. Keep it going. Yeah. I am Outstanding, outstanding, outstanding. <laughs> and you are all those things. You are all those things. You, you, you are all those things. So the next thing we're going to do, did anybody else want to share? You did? Okay, don't, uh, well, you will though, don't worry about it, you will. Rituals, rituals. Now these are things that we're going to do on a daily basis, okay? These are things that are going to create more time. They say that um, if you get your clothes ready the night before, that it saves you an additional 30 minutes of time in the morning. You can literally lay in the bed for a dish. Well, you don't lay in the bed. Think about what you're going to do. <laughs> don't lay in the bed. But it literally saves you an additional 30 minutes of time in the morning, okay? 30 minutes of time. That's just laying your clothes out. That could be one of your rituals. Having your breakfast already prepared can be one of your rituals. Um, a glass of water before you leave to start the day. Making sure you drink. 12 to um, 24 ounces right before you leave, before you eat anything. The majority of us are walking around, this goes to the doctor and me again, the majority of us are walking around dehydrated. So you're supposed to literally drink half your body weight in ounces of water every single day or you're dehydrated. I weigh 235 pounds. I, I have to drink 117 ounces of water a day. If you weigh, yes. You know you can get that same water you can, that's a lot of fruits and vegetables though. For real. That's a whole lot of fruits and vegetables. If you can, if you can stomach all that, because uh, that water is the same way, but you need to drink water. Yeah, but not in that case, just eating fruits and vegetables. It could be just the eight cups and then fruits and vegetables. Yeah, but also- Now that, that's, what, that's what you hear. Just trust me. Just because of condensation, your glands and movement constantly, water's constantly dispensing out your body all day. And then what we do is, then we drink things like coffee, tea, and dehydrogens, right, that push water out. So even if you are getting that it with your, it, it cancels it out. Like and, and, and because of um, the foods that we eat now, because of the extra estrogens, the antibiotics and things that are in them, we need to flush that stuff out. So you want to get that in you really good. So five rituals, we're going to write them down, five rituals, five rituals. What am I going to do? What am I going to start doing that's going to make my day go smoother? That's going to make my day go easier? Am I going to get my kids lunch together? Am I going to start making sure dinner's together? Check my emails, make sure my phone messages are squared away. Make sure I check the mailbox every morning. <laughs> Small things, the little things in life, right? Make sure my tire pressure tight so I quit being late to class. <laughs> tire pressure, no flat tires.
Okay. All right, so I got two volunteers. Who are they? Let me see some courageous people. Two volunteers. Outstanding, young lady. Stand on up there right in the right corner. I knew you would do it there. <laughs> now, these are things that are going to improve the quality of her life. Now, everybody's life is different. Everybody's got different things that they do, different responsibilities. So, let's have it. Awesome. Now, when you say waking up earlier, so this can be something systemic. What do you mean by earlier? How many minutes? Oh, yes. That's some good sleep. Gosh. <laughs> oh, Levin, that, that worked excellent. Okay. Excellent. 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 Rituals next. Yes. Five rituals. Lay out clothes. Make a checklist of to-do items that day. Laugh more when appropriate. Make time for at least 10 minutes for a power nap or two. And eat a lot less. Eat a lot less? Eat a lot less like how? Sweets, donuts, cookies. Okay, very good. Outstanding. So now this is every single day. Yes. Outstanding, 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 outstanding. The next person, who's my next volunteer? Oh, that, it'll help your heart. Thank you. Thank you. I'll share mine. My ritual is each morning, first thing, I say my prayers. Okay. I make my bed before I leave home and pick up every day. Okay. I cook breakfast. I have everything ready for the, today. I've gotten it ready on the night before. I check my daily calendar. I make sure I leave the house on schedule, and I leave affirming that I'm going to have a great day. That is okay. awesome. Now, are you already doing that, or this is new? No, I just, I've done this. Oh, you, oh, this is supposed to be new. <laughs> That's an awesome schedule. Yeah, yes, okay. excellent, excellent. Ex and so, that, so if that's working for you and it's keeping your time together, that's phenomenal. If you need to create something where you need to create more time, this is when you add things in addition to it. Well, if, uh, I don't, uh, in my old age, I don't leave before the sun wake up. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so anything is centered around my soul. Okay, okay. Uh, but no, this is something I've done all my life. That's amazing. Yeah. That's great. And, and, and you, you'll find that when you, as, as, as you get older, what you're going to do is begin the process of having rituals. Some of them, and most people, are just bad rituals, mm -hmm. right? Because they'll be complaining about their life working. Oh yeah, that, right. Every single morning, I gotta be, make sure I'm at the at the store to get my box of Newports. I gotta get a, I gotta get my carton. Okay. So there go people. This is one. A man has made at least a start on discovering the meaning of life when he stands, when he plants shade trees under which he knows full well he will never sit. And looking at that right there, just for time's sake, so getting through this. That's a powerful quote because the things that we do now as far as laying down a foundation for our future are some of the most powerful things and you'd be surprised how you attract those things coming in your life. So with people, what type of people support my dreams and goals? Mm -hmm. All the people I know are good people. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so all the, but, neg but what type of people, now these are new people that we're creating. Like, what, what are you going to, what, what, are, what are you majoring in? Me? Yes, ma'am. Music. Music. All right, so what do you want to do with that, with your music? Uh, since I'm retired, mm -hmm. um, I teach young people that show me that they're interested. So you want to teach. So right now, who right now that, that's doing that, who could help you reach that goal? Who could help you get to where you want to, you want to be teaching? You want to, you want to be, children. huh? My grandchildren. Yeah, okay, so your grandchildren, but even more so look at people that are already teaching. Well, people that, are, that already are, are doing exactly what you want to do. There are a lot of, uh, I still live in the hood. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, <laughs> okay. Uh, I live straight in the hood. Okay. And I mostly interact with underprivileged children and ignorant mothers. Okay. And I sort of take those babies and I work with them. So, even better yet, a non-for-profit organizations. Mm -hmm. 
talking with non-for-profit organizations that deal with mothers, children, families, going and seeing how they got set up, or even setting up a program where you could work with them. So you already, you already have. I have a ministry. There we, excellent. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. So now you're just point, you're, you're, you're sinking that in. Even the biggest thing is, is this. The vision that you have getting support from the people in your community, not only that you're getting the support, but you're also helping them in the process. Exactly. exactly. Okay. I love it. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Now, like and this, what we just went to is how can I be of service to them and be of value to them? One of the things that I did when I, um, when, I, when I graduated chiropractic school, I wrote 50 chiropractors. I wrote them all a letter, and I wrote and I said, look, this is what I want to do. I want to come to your practice, I want to work at it, and then if you're interested in selling it, I want to buy it from you and take it over. Out of 50 letters, how many do you think I got back? One. I got two or three back. I actually got two or three back that was like, look, you can come and you can work. And you can, um, you can be an associate here, you can set up here, and, and then I'll eventually sell my practice back to you. I mean, it was just asking. But I want to come work for you, I want to serve you, I want to support you, and I want to help you grow and retire successfully. It was just asking. Just asking. Okay? And like we talked about, which was brought out earlier, accountability partners. Find an accountability partner, somebody that you can count on, and somebody that can count on you. My accountability partner, every Monday at 6.30, we get on the phone, eat, and we only talk for five minutes. What are your goals for the week? What are your collection goals for the week? How many people are you going to serve this week? What are you willing to give up, and what are you willing to do to make sure that you make that happen? Are you willing to stay and make a, an hour calls an extra day? Are you willing uh, to, 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 to call all your, 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 um, your, your, your clients and, and make sure that you're, you're consoling with them and you're connecting with them more? Are you willing to do more talks, schedule more events to reach your goals? And then it's like, oh, I gotta make this accountability call. I gotta be on task. I gotta be on, get an accountability partner. And it can be anybody, okay? And then passion. There's no passion to be found playing small and settling for a life that is less than the one you are capable of living. This is Nelson Mandela. I, I, anybody, you all heard of Nelson Mandela? I saw the movie. I was in Detroit when he came to Detroit to the Tiger Stadium. I was downtown, I was at school, and then it was just going crazy. It was all over the news. And I didn't know who Nelson Mandela was. I saw this old feeble man. You know, coming to Tiger Stadium, he had, they gave him a Detroit hat, he threw the ball, he barely made it to the, um, to the dugout, I mean, he, the catcher. You know, I didn't know what was happening. I didn't know what was happening. That was my impression of Nelson Mandela. But this was a man that was so passionate about something that was bigger. You're talking about South, South, Southern Africa, about the government, about how people was being treated that he went to prison, and he stayed there. 27 years. 27 years. Because he stood for something bigger than himself. And he created something international, all around the world, because of a passion, because of a desire. I got a few things up here. If you don't know what your passion is, if you can't get it from this right here, this will spark things in you that will bring together what your passion is and even finding it. Some people don't know what their passion is. One of the things that I sit down and I talk to my practice members is, especially the ones that have the high, high stress, I say, what is your passion? What is it that you love to do? What do you love to do and how much are you doing it? How much are you indulging in it? How often are you doing it? Well, Doc, I got kids now, and I got, I, I got a job now, and I just, I like to work out. I like to do yoga. I like to dance. I like to, I like to do this. I just don't have time anymore. I like to read. I just, I don't have time anymore to do all those things. 
How much are you throwing yourself in your passion? This young lady's going into music. This is her degree. This is what she's doing. But she's got a ministry that her music is going to support her ministry going to another level. So she's able to be in her passion. The one thing I want to tell you all about balance is this. Who knows how to have balance? You know how to have it. <laughs> is, is, is it how do you have balance? Well, for one thing, I'm, uh, I'm punctual. I get up in time to do what I have to do. Mm -hmm. Never go on a watch. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But when I'm talking about... I, I just balance my activities. If I've got an appointment, I'm going to be on time. Mm -hmm. I leave in time. I plan ahead. So that, okay, so that's perfect. And, and, and with that, okay, so I got something for you. So, so, so as life creeps up, right? So the one young lady I heard, she was saying in there, I don't know if she's in here, she said she just got a job. And then as soon as she got a full-time position, then she got a full-time schedule at school. Mm -hmm. Now she doesn't have much time for family. So even with balancing that, Even with balancing that, because life with life with life comes up, different things actually occur. I've done those things that I learned how to write today. I have a time on the stove. Mm -hmm. I cook today, tomorrow's meal today. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and, and you cut things out. And that's where it goes into the, po the point of being the urgent things you do first and the most important things you do later. Mm-hmm. Right. And taking the time for yourself. And so that's, and that's a learn, these are learned habits. These are learned habits. Outstanding. So revisit your childhood on what you did when you loved to do. Even if it was playing with blocks. If it was running in the park, eating ice cream, make a vision board. Go get all of the oldest magazines that you have. All of them. And what you do is you cut the pictures out of things, the big house, the vacations, the families, anything that's, that you vision that you want for your future. You cut it out, you stick it right on that board. I got a vision board up and I had to make a new one because I got everything on that vision board. <laughs> make a vision board and watch it come and put it up so you can see it. You can make a vision board just for school. P put one up, have books, have, have a, a money made, big loans paid, all of that stuff, put it on there. Watch it come to you. But you, you'll never know if you don't do it. Take breaks from business thinking. Take breaks from being in school all the time. Take breaks from, from always on the grind. Take breaks from studying. You've got to give yourself a mental vacation sometimes. You have to. Do you know the biggest the biggest business mongols and the biggest business people, they take four up to four vacations a year. Nice. <laughs> you know what? It sounds like it. It sounds like it. But if you don't, you burn out. Yep. Yep. I, have, I have docs that I coach all around the country. I have talks that I do around the country. And I run three offices. If I don't take a break, and I have two gir little girls. Love them. Princesses. Princesses. Three and seven. Oh, very. <laughs> and, and I have to make time for that because that's the most important thing, but everything else is important too. So you've got to take a mental break to detox. Okay? And I wrote this for you, and I don't know if this was somewhere. Give love, accept love, receive love, be love. Because you are love. There you go. Thank you, everybody, for your time. I appreciate you. And I, I am here for a couple minutes for any questions that you have. OK? Any questions from anybody? Where'd you get that suit? Oh, I don't remember. <laughs> you like it, man? You want it? <laughs>